told me a story one time um, uh, that I used to have a reserve booth uh, over at Ado. <laughs> Uh, and you were in your bartending days, I believe. Uh, that wasn't from my bartending days. It's when I first met you. When I first met you was right when I, either I just bought the Mavs or were about to buy the Mavs, and we were like a cold river or something. I, I walked up to I've you. I've been known to be there on occasion. Yeah, yeah, and this was a long time ago, right? Yeah. I walked up, and you go, have you heard about that guy looking at buying the Mavs? <laughs> I said, that's me, right? You're like, okay, great. And you went on. I was like, so. Yeah, I probably. I, <laughs> it was all good, right? I probably like, should have invited you to sit down. No, no, it was great. <laughs> I, and I loved it, right? And I was like, okay, this is cool. This is, this is yeah. fun. But when you started and when you bought the Mavs and didn't you buy the big fancy house and, and yet you didn't, we, we did a story with Steve Atkinson. If yeah, you remember this, came to your house. Yeah. This is a, a new era, a new decade, a new millennium. And I'll do whatever it takes to make this team successful. There you, you didn't have any furniture in None. there. I mean, you had like a wiffle ball. A wiffle ball bat that's still up above the mantle, right? It's I, still there. I, I, I wouldn't let my wife take it. You can yeah. put other stuff elsewhere. That's mine. If it hadn't been for the wife, would there be furniture in there today? No. I, li I have a place in Manhattan Beach that I've had for 20 years. Hmm. People like stop by to get me. I've got a bed. I've got a TV. I've got internet access. I have no tables, no nothing. <laughs> Like, I just don't care. Is that like the same reason for constantly wearing just simply the T-shirts and the sneakers? And yeah, the and I like mean, it? look, I mean, uh, who, who do I have to impress? You know, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm just, you know, I, I'm comfortable. And I know I look good in them, so I'm just comfortable. <laughs> well, was it a major uh, adjustment, though, when the wife comes along? Of course. And then here come the kids. Yep, of course. Uh, which was harder there? The kids. Either one? The, the kids? kids, yeah, without question, because, you know, when they were super young, they weren't people yet. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? They, they don't have their personalities yet. You don't really know them. Now they, they all have their 5, 8, and 11, and they all have their individual personalities, and there's fun things to do with them. And, you know, we just spent two and a half weeks, you know, just us. And so it's just, yeah, it just changes everything. Do they understand who their dad is? Um, yes and no, right? Um, they do, um, but... We re I really try to downplay it, you know, it's just, you know, I'll be around when, they'll be around when people are asking for pictures and autographs or this or that, and, you know, and I'm always like, no, I'm Melissa's dad, you know, they're, they're stopping me because I'm Jake's dad, you know, and, you know, but they come to the Mavs games and they, they see Shark Tank and everything, but, you know, I, I, we really try to work hard to make it so that, you know, we're as normal as normal as they can be. But working hard uh, to, to make it as normal as they can be, that's incredibly hard. Yeah, especially it? when you're going on a private plane everywhere you go. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And sleeping in the best hotels and everything yeah. that comes along with it. I mean, are, 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 you, are you concerned more about raising them with money or, or just raising them in, in America today? Oh, raising with money. I mean, this is the greatest country on the earth. I mean, I'm not worried about America. You know, a lot of people like to talk about all of this. Well, no. I'm kind of getting at it, like, like with the two daughters, for example. Right. I, I'm not sure I want to knock on your door to pick up your daughter for no, the, the prom. You know, no, I, you <laughs> don't. I mean, I don't, think, I don't think I want my grandson to knock no, on that no, door. No, you yeah. don't. Trust me. You, I, we just, we were on vacation. There was a 10-year-old little boy okay, who came yeah. in to see my 11-year-old daughter, uh -huh. and I just gave him the death stare. <laughs> and he would not come near me. I didn't say a word to him, right? You know, silence can be a lot more convincing than anything you say sometimes. But are you going to be that dad that is overly protective of the two daughters and then pat your son exact on the back and say, way to go, boy? No, no, the exact opposite. I'm, I'm going to yeah. try to be that dad that says, you have to think for yourself. I can't be there all the time. And I want to be here while you're learning how to make decisions so that we can talk about it. Now, my wife is super protective. And I literally am the, the, the parent that says, no, they have to learn how to deal with these, these things while we're here, while, you know, while we're around them so that they can see, we can see them make mistakes. Because if, if they're not capable of making mistakes, then they'll make, the, they'll make bigger mistakes. That's, that's the way I felt about it. Do you see yourself pushing them in any fashion to achieve greatness? Uh, I push them to value learning. I try to push them to be excited about learning. I try to push them to um, be inquisitive about the world and understand what's going on. I try to push them to have confidence in themselves, but not to take anything for granted. Um, and to, you know, try to be good people. You know, that's my biggest fear, that they grow up to be entitled jerks. And there's, you know, I, there, I caught it with my, my oldest daughter. You know, I'm like, you're not all that. <laughs> right? No, 11-year-old girls in general are going to yeah. think they're all that. They right? are all that. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, look, you know, you've got, you've got to be self-aware. 
That's the word I use. You know, I want you to be self-aware. No one's perfect, right? And as close as you are right now, I just, I just want you to, 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 to be able to grow up and, and live a life that you enjoy. I would guess uh, uh, your boy doesn't understand this yet, but your 11-year-old daughter, I mean, th- does she know she's going to be rich in her 20s? Well, she knows she Will won't she be. be rich no, she knows she won't be. She knows she's going to have to earn it herself. Yeah, I mean, I'll make you, sure that you don't have a trust fund set aside so that at 25 they. No, there's very specific rules that in order to get anything, they have to do something. Is it one of the scariest jobs you have? Not is to so. raise children who are not going to become spoiled brats. It as is you the said? scariest thing in my life ever. After their health, there's nothing scarier. And it's just, it's terrifying. And my wife and I talk about it all the time. You know, because you look for things. I mean, I'm sure every parent does this, right? You look for little indications. What's, what, what's the future going to hold? They just did this. Does that mean that? You know, or they're acting this way around this friend. Let's keep them away from that friend. I mean, that, those are the most intense conversations my wife and I have. I'm like, Tiff, no, no, we don't want this one around. Yeah. <laughs> and at the same time, I mean, I, I, I think any parent, but especially you, I would think, you know, you can't just buy all their problems to go. Oh, no, the exact opposite. You can't just fix everything that No, I don't want want to be able to fix. No, and I no, I don't want them to be able to fix them that way. I want them to be able to fix their own problems. Look, if if I lived in a smaller world, you know, it might be you might think I might think it's easier, but in reality, there's nobody in a smaller world who thinks it's easier. It's just that's just the nature of parenting and it's terrifying um, as much for me and my wife as anybody else. Mm -hmm.